A very, very warm welcome to our evening prayer this evening on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. The psalm this evening is Psalm 68, verses 1 to 10 and verses 32 to 35. And the reading this evening is Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. The light and the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us, so let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ, rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 68 Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so may they vanish away. As wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them make merry with gladness. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of the fatherless defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to songs of welcome. 
but the rebellious inhabit a burning desert. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped down rain at the presence of God, the Lord of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent down a gracious rain, O oh God. You refreshed your inheritance when it was weary. Your people came to dwell there, in your goodness, O oh God, you provide for the poor. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Make music in praise of God. He rides on the ancient heaven of heavens and sends forth his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose splendor is over Israel, whose power is above the clouds. How terrible is God in his holy sanctuary, the God of Israel, who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We say the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day forth all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. Then they gathered around Jesus and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I have three questions for you. Don't panic, they're not hard. The first one is, can you remember back to Easter? Doesn't it seem a long time ago? And you are right, it has been a long time because we are now in the seventh week of Easter. And through this time in our gospel readings, we have been reminded that Jesus kept his word, that he can be trusted because he did not leave his disciples alone and abandoned, but kept on meeting with them and transforming their lives. In our reading from Acts, as we come to the end of the season of Easter, we are given uh, another shift in perspective. And we have just heard that Jesus was with his disciples outside and it was time for him to say goodbye, to ascend to his heavenly father. Again, though, he reassured them that although things were going to change, he would still be there, as always, to love them and guide them, and he would send them the Holy Spirit to help them. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the second question is, where is the furthest place that you have been fortunate enough to travel to? Some of you may have traveled to really far away places. Now, of course, things are very different and we can't go very far now. However, we are still a long way from where Jesus' disciples lived, from Jerusalem. We have been sent, we have been sent as witnesses to show in our lives and words that Jesus loves and saves individuals and saves the world. You may know that we have a, a group for young people called the Sunday Takeaway. And some of those in that Sunday Takeaway WhatsApp group sent in photos of where they live. And as we watched a, a little slideshow of these photographs, we prayed for the places we saw and also asked ourselves the question, how are we being a witness for Jesus saving love in this world? And that is my third question for you. You may be able to leave your home for some exercise? If you are, why not make that a prayer walk, praying for the homes and spaces that you go past? You may be shielding and so looking out on others passing by in the street, you could pray for them or pray about the news you hear or watch during this time until Pentecost, which is next Sunday, there is an encouragement for prayer from the Church of England called Thy Kingdom Come. You can get an app on your phone, it's free, to download and to help you pray, or you can search for Thy Kingdom Come on the internet. Or one of the things that is very simple to do is to decide on five people that you will pray for every day this week and you will pray that they will know God's love in Christ. Just five people. Perhaps make it a similar time every day. You may well already be doing some of these things. 
But I'm going to conclude with a prayer now. And it's a special collect prayer for this time thy kingdom come, this time between Jesus' ascension and the day of Pentecost. And let us remember those words of Jesus, that he will give us power in the Holy Spirit and that each one of us will be witnesses to Jesus' saving love to the ends of the earth. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for in the ascension of your Son, you have raised us on high and given us a glimpse of eternal life and the promise of your abiding presence. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we sit in our homes, where we can be still in the quietness, perhaps it would be nice if we could think of all those close to us, our friends and family, all those we long to see again, just as Jesus promised to be with us always, those people are in our hearts always. So I would like you to think of those who you love and keep them in your prayers as I read this verse as a prayer for us all on this train of life. Life is like a journey on a train, with its stations, with changes of routes, and with accidents. At birth, we board the train and meet our parents. And we believe that they will always travel by our side. However, at some station, our parents will step down from the train leaving us on this journey alone. As time goes by, other people will board this train and they will be significant. That is, our, our siblings, our friends, our children, and even the love of our life. Many will step down and leave a permanent vacuum 
others will go so unnoticed that we don't realise that they have vacated their seats, which is very sad when you think about it. The train ride will be full of joy, sorrow, fantasy, expectations, hellos, goodbyes and farewells. Success consists of having a good relationship with the passengers, requiring that we give the best of ourselves. The mystery to everyone is that we do not know which station we ourselves will step down. So we must live in the best way. Love, forgive, and offer the best of who we are. It is important to do this because when the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories of those that will continue to travel on this train of life. I wish you a joyful journey this year on the train of life. Reap success and give lots of love. More importantly, give thanks for the journey. And lastly, I would love, like to thank you for being the passengers on my train. And just to finish our prayer to our Lord. Watch thou, dear Lord, with all who watch or wake or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones. Refresh your weary ones. Sustain your dying ones. Calm your suffering ones. Have pity on your distressed ones. And all for your mercy and love's sake. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And you may wish to join with me if you know the words to our special Vesper prayer. May God's blessing surround you each day As you trust Him and walk in His way May His presence within guard and keep you from sin Go in peace, go in joy, go in love May God's blessing surround you tonight as you trust him and walk in his light may his presence within guard and keep you from sin go in peace go in joy go in love amen so let us all go in peace to love and to serve the lord in the name of Christ. Amen.